on a circuit switch network, you're bringing up connections as you need them. You're sending traffic across that connection. You're sending voice across that connection. And then you're tearing down the connection at the end. This is very much like using a telephone where you pick it up, you dial some numbers, you talk for a little while. And then at the end of the phone call, you hang up and that connection is terminated. You don't have the connection always sitting there and always on. And then, of course, if you wanted to call someone else, you type in some other numbers, and it creates a new circuit to that person. You communicate, and then you hang up the phone, and that connection is torn down again. A type of circuit switch connection that you might bring up and never tear down is one like a T1. You're taking a single circuit, and that single circuit may be going all the way across the country and using that circuit and resources all the way from one side to the other. And even if you don't send anything over that connection, it's still being used just for you. It's a very inefficient use for resources. A T1 isn't one of these things where you can decide during night, if you're not using it, someone else could take advantage of those resources. With these circuit switch connections, you don't have that type of flexibility. It's always yours. You're either going to use that data, or you're not going to send information over that circuit and send that data across that connection. And whether you're using it or not, it's always going to be yours. Nobody else can take advantage of that. Now, because of that, you also get a guaranteed type of bandwidth, a guaranteed type of delivery across that connection because nobody else can use it. But because you're now using this and it's dedicated for you, there's usually a premium associated with that. You're going to be paying for that connection whether you use it or not. Common types of circuit switch networks are things like your plain old telephone service or your public switch telephone network. You also have T1s, E1s, T3s, and E3s where you're bringing up a circuit and it's always going to be there. That circuit switch is one that doesn't switch very much. You bring it up and it sits there. ISDN is another example of a circuit switch network that brings up a connection as you need it and tears it down when you're done. A packet switch network has a different method of communicating. It's one where you're taking all of your information, whether it's voice or video or data, you're putting it into these digital packets, and you're sending it out over the network. And because you're doing that, you can use a shared media. And when you're sending some packets, other people can wait. And when you're finished sending your data, other people are able to put their packets inside of that same network. Because of this, it's a very efficient use of your resources. You can share the road effectively with other people that might need to send data over those connections. Because you have this flexibility in being able to send data only when you have it, you can pay for only a little bit of bandwidth, whereas somebody else who's using the same road may use a lot more bandwidth, and they can pay for a little bit more. So it's a very efficient use of resources and one that's very common to see in some of our high-speed networks and our wide area networks that we use today. Obviously, some very common types of packet switch networks are things like your Sonnet or your ATM networks and your DSL, frame relay, MPLS, cable modem, wireless. You've got a lot of different ways to packetize your data and send it out over those networks. And so you can see this is why some of these newer networking types have become so much more popular, because you have the ability to do packet switching over them rather than circuit switching.